Well, I'm excited that we are going to have our children ministry reopen in person. And um, I would like to invite Melissa and Steffi to come forward because they have something in their hearts that they are going to share to us. Come on, give them a big hand one more time. Praise the Lord. This is Melissa and that is Steffi. Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you so much, Pastor Paul and everyone for just letting us give this time to really share what's been the hearts of our children's ministry team. Um, as you heard in the video, uh, we are re reopening our in-person children ministry next week. I think I said next month in, it, in there, but it's next week, um, Sunday, May 23rd. And we're truly and genuinely excited to reopen because it's been challenging to do Zoom um, Sunday school classes. And it's really hard for us to really interact with the kids and um, build that relationship. So we're really excited to reopen in person. Um, we're starting off um, in a phased approach. So there'll be one class for the 11 a.m. service, which is for the primary and junior class. Um, but not only that, while we were planning and really, um, you know, focusing on the reopening, it gave our children's ministry team an opportunity to be intentional in really um, taking the time and praying and seeking God in what he's trying to do for our next generation. Um, for the last couple of weeks, our church has been talking about revival. And we really believe that revival isn't um, limited to just the youth and adults in this room, um, but it's also to our younger children. Um, our children are so full of faith and they are so powerful and it's been really encouraging even through the Sunday school Zoom classes where we see them grow even in their prayer and you know um, their prayer becomes more about declaration and um, they are so powerful and I think sometimes we you know we forget that at times and uh, we limit our expectations on them because they might be young they're just cute and they might get distracted really fast but um, we really want to change that mindset and want to really remember to see them as Jesus does and that's the kind of culture that we really want to build within our children's ministry as we reopen um, so one of the things that's been in our hearts is to really have children ministry be in more alignment with the direction of the church um, and what we're hearing in terms of our the message in the service um, obviously we'll still be following some type of curriculum because the foundation and understanding the Bible is still important, but we'll also begin to incorporate the themes and messages that we're hearing here um, in a way that they would better understand in their age groups, of course. Um, for instance, like when we're talking about revival here, you know, we want to begin incorporating that in the children's ministry as well so that they get familiarized with that word, what that means, how to pray, how to pray for that. And so with that, we really believe with that alignment with what we're hearing here and the children's ministry, um, it'll really strengthen and unite our families and help them grow together in their faith because then everyone in the household is gonna be praying after the same thing and really asking for the same thing and um, it'll just unite the families all together so, as we apply the word together. So, and Steffi will share other things that we have in our hearts. Um, so going based off of what Mel said about uniting families, um, Part of that is uh, we began to kind of see children ministry as a family ministry. And what we mean by that is like we, we minister to the children, but we also need to minister to the whole family because when they go home, they're with their parents and um, their siblings and their parents are their child's first teacher. So it's really important that they are um, also like implementing and applying what they learned at Sunday school at home. So that they have a stronger foundation. Um, something for like at school, right? Like teachers really believe that parent-teacher partnerships is the key component to learning. And I believe that that's true for Sunday school as well. And as teachers, like we want to be able to equip the parents and partner with the parents in raising this generation that um, is strong in their, in their foundation and the word of God and also helping them as they navigate through their own relationship with Jesus. Um, Proverbs 22, 6 says, raise up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Um, I'm a little nervous, so just bear with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so again, we just wanted to share what's been on our hearts and um, part of fulfilling what God has in plan for the children ministry is having teachers and finding new teachers who are passionate about the ministry, about children, about Jesus, about wanting to build a relationship with the kids and not only with the kids, but with the parents and really just influencing their lives in a positive way. Um, so uh, as we are talking, if you feel compelled or called to uh, volunteer for the children ministry, please like let Melissa and I know. We also have an uh, interest form on our children website, our children ministry website, if you're interested so that you can um, kind of also tell us like which area you are most interested or what age group. Um, to conclude, I wanted to reference James's preaching a while ago. He said something along the lines of wanting to raise a generation that hungers for God. And I believe that that starts with the children. Um, there's research that says that children form their beliefs and habits by the time they're age five. And so if we want to raise a generation that's hungry for God, we have to invest in our children. Um, so we hope that you can join us and support us as we fulfill the calling that God has for our ministry. Thank you. Thank you, Steffi. Thank you, Melissa. Talking about the kids, you need to understand that both of them, they were those kids. Now they are the leaders. So we are passing the baton and we look forward and we believe that God has a great plan for every one of us, for the young and old, for the, uh, you know, even for our children. I remember I have two friends, um, they are ministering to the children. The first one, he's a businessman, his name is Al Hollingsworth, and um, he lives here in Diamond Bar, and um, he, um, he owns a packaging company, which is one of the largest in the U.S., and the clients is like Fortune 500 companies, and um, like Kellogg's, and um, Procter and Gamble and so forth, but uh, he said that, Pastor Paul, my goal is to equip the children, the children, the children, and that is what he has been doing for the past, I don't know how many years, 20, 30 years now. I have another friend that uh, he was the uh, vice president of Coca-Cola. He retired right now. He focused um, in equipping not only the youth but also the children and his name is Ed Turos and uh, both of them they came to our church uh, several times uh, many years ago and we have been consistent and we want to see our children your children your children being equipped in the in the word of the Lord in the ways of the Lord amen how many of you parents, uh, you want to see your children grow up in the ways of the Lord? They are going to be powerful, powerful, powerful. And uh, I want to show you a video, a few minutes video. And um, the video is about the kids praising the Lord. And you will see several different kids. And uh, the last two girls in the video they are the, the daughters of one of our worship leaders, um, Lily and her husband, Ari. And uh, you will see that how, how they worship the Lord and how they pray. And I pray that, that the Lord will touch you, every one of you, because um, Peter, during worship, Peter is one of our intercessors and uh, he came and whispered to me pastor i got a word that the holy spirit is is, is here and he's going to he is going to pour out his spirit as long as you are hungry and thirsty Steffi mentioned about that how many of you are hungry and thirsty for more of god and uh, i want you to to allow the holy spirit to touch you several days ago marcus sent me a very uh, long text that as he prayed, he experienced a powerful, powerful visitation from the Lord. It is, it is amazing. So open your heart. And as you watch the video, 
I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will also speak to you. Amen. the two girls, Lily and Ari's daughter. I'd like to invite all of you to stand up right now and pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are here. Holy Spirit, we, we need you. Holy Spirit, change us. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Holy Spirit, you can speak to the children. You can speak to us as well. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you raise the younger generation in our church, O oh God. Oh, the, the generation that have passion for you, passion for you. Even last week, Holly was interviewed by a ministry in, in London about her, her passion for children. O oh God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. You are awesome. You are awesome, God. You work within us right now. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that you cause us to have uh, more hunger and thirst for you, O oh God. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, here we are, O oh God. Here we are, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord, I declare right now that every one of us will say, I'm hungry for more of you. I'm thirsty for more of you. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that we will go home not the same person as we came here, O oh God, because of your spirit, because of your spirit, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Here we are, O oh God. Here we are, O oh God. More of you, more of you in our life. More of God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say it. Everybody say it. Amen, amen. You may keep on standing. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. God is good. God is good. Uh, talking about expectation, I believe God has a great plan for us. And the verse that we have been quoting for the past several months, God says that, For I know the plans that I have for you. And the plans that God has for every one of you are great plans because we have a great God. So I want you to believe that God has prepared for you those great plans. And regardless of what situation you are going through right now, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind and believing that God has a great plan for you. You may not understand what you are going through right now, why you are going through right now, uh, but God has great plans for you and God will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will enlighten your mind, your heart right now because we have been created for more. How many, how many of you believe that we have been created for more? We have been created for more. This is not it. This is not it. But many people just settle for just um, Christianity light. What does it mean? Christianity light is just like uh, what is called cultural Christianity. What is cultural Christianity? You know, people are, people are happy if they just uh, attend church. If they just come to church, they are happy. And my prayer is that all of you, all of you here uh, in person or all of you who are watching online, you are not satisfied only just by attending church. But I pray that you, each one of you, us, you know, we become a pursuer of God. We pursue God. We chase after God. We experience God. And if you watch the video just now, you saw that these children, they worship the Lord not at church. They worship the Lord at home. They worship the Lord. They praise the Lord um, in the car. They pray. They worship God. And I want you to know that the Bible mentioned that children, well, we, 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 we may uh, look at children as cute. Oh, this is, uh, they are cute, but the way God looks at children, children, children are inheritance from the Lord, and they are weapons in the, in the hands of the parents. And God used your children. And I want you to know that parents never say that it's too late. If you have uh, grown up children, I, I believe that you can still pray for your children. And all of us, I, I know that God is going to use every one of us. How many of you agree with me? God is going to use every one of us. And one of the kids, one of the girls that pray, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Wow, that is a prayer of declaration. Oh, how many of you can make a prayer of declaration? Remember I told you that prayer is not only for the sake of prayer. That is religion, you know, but Christianity, you know, we, we pray because we heard instruction from the Lord. God gives you instruction what to pray. And I talked to, to Lily just now this morning, and um, she told us that uh, her two children, they're uh, five and seven years old, and she told me that uh, in the last several days, they begin to pray the prayer of declaration. They, they, uh, they cast out demons, you know. They, they make a declaration, the power of darkness be gone in the name of Jesus. You're talking about not only just regular cutie, cutie uh, uh, kind of prayer. This is like, whoa, there is power. There is power, authority in the name of Jesus. And that is what I pray for all of you. That is what I pray for all of you, the, the, all of the congregation here in person and also you, you are watching online. God has a great plan for every one of you. How many of you can say amen to that? Oh, that is kind of weak. How many of you can really shout amen for that? 
I long for that. That is my prayer. That is my prayer. It's not only cultural Christianity, but we really experience God and we become pursuer of God because we live in a time where people just compartmentalize um, God. You know, we just compartmentalize uh, our life. And we, we, we make compartments, we make compartments, and, 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 and church, uh, to some people, church is just like one of the compartments. One of the compartments, oh, okay, I work, you know, I study, I go to school, I do business, and this and that, and now Sunday. Okay, Sunday is the slot for God. And uh, do you know that the, the real life in Jesus is not Sunday oriented only. No, no, no. A life with Jesus is not Sunday oriented. No, it's every day. Just watch the video. They, you can, you, you can saw that they, this, this children, they know, they know. And Jesus said that we need to learn from little children. We need to learn from little children because sometimes we grown up, you know, we we, we, we have so many uh, um, ideas, so many opinions, and we forgot that we are too complicated when we cannot really absorb the simple things of God. How many of you are hungry and thirsty for God? Oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, so, as we come to church, it's not only, I pray, okay? It's not only a 90-minute or two-hour service Believing that, that that's all there is to have a relationship with God. No, that's not enough. Let me ask you. If you eat, if you eat once a week, will you be strong or will you be weak? Do you want to become a strong follower of Jesus? We need to eat every day. We need to engage. We need to engage every day. We need to come to the Lord every day. We need to, and it, it is a commitment. Yes, it is. It's not, it's not just, just uh, um, cultural Christianity. It is about commitment, commitment in Jesus. Well, several days ago, the Christian all around the world celebrate the ascension of Christ. And next week is the day of Pentecost. This is one of the uh, uh, three big festivals um, for the uh, people in, in Israel. And I want to read to you from the book of John, chapter 7. And there is a context here um, when Jesus was in that festival. Okay, this is called the uh, Festival of uh, Tabernacle. That is one of the greatest uh, festival. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, it says, On the last and greatest day of the festivals, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. If you are thirsty, come to Jesus, and not only come to Jesus, drink, drink. Whoever believes in me, do you believe in him? He said, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Rivers, rivers, not only river, but rivers. It's not, not, not only one river, but it is plural, rivers of living water. So if some of you feel like you are dry, you are dry, come to Jesus and drink. Come to Jesus and drink. This is time for you to come to Jesus and drink. This is the time for you to be satisfied and Verse 39 says, it, it, it was clarified that by this he meant, by this Jesus meant, the Holy Spirit, whom those who believe in him will, were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not been glorified. Jesus had not died on the cross, he had not been risen, he, he, he was not glorified yet. So Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. If you want to experience revival, come to the Holy Spirit, experience, to the, Holy, experience the Holy Spirit. And 
I want you to understand that the entire premise of this passage in John chapter 7 is based on thirst. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. <laughs> this is not a prop. Literally, somehow my throat was dry. <laughs> so, the Bible in the Old Testament is written in the narrative form, in stories, you know. It, its stories tell a message. So in the Old Testament, you, you read narratives, and, um, and, and the stories gives a message, send a message, teach us a message, tell a message. But uh, in the New Testament, it is written in principle, but it's written allegorically. There are analogies, there are parables of comparison of things. And when God wanted to talk to us about certain aspect, He used things that we would naturally understand. I remember when I talked to Steffi several weeks ago, maybe last month, yeah? She said, Pastor Paul, I remember when I was in Sunday school, my teacher told us stories. And I remember. And yes, stories that can tell, that can give you, that can give us message. But in the, in the New Testament, uh, you, you learn about principles that is explained in parables. And Jesus used things that we would naturally understand. We can understand. For example, like this one here. This is also the word of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So Jesus used this, 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 this parable, this uh, analogy, okay, so that we can, we can understand because I believe we all can understand. I believe everybody here in the room knows how it means to be hungry. I believe all of us know how to be thirsty. And even as I mentioned, uh, it's close to lunchtime now. Maybe some of you begin to get hungry. You can relate with this. So Jesus is using that kind of emotion. Jesus is using that kind of feeling to communicate to kind of people uh, that, 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 that want to that he wants to talk to. So, the topic that I want to share to you is very simple. Are you hungry and thirsty for God? Are you hungry and thirsty for God? Hunger and thirst are indicators of something. They are indicators of something that you desire that you don't presently have. But you can have it. You can obtain it. And you can, you, can, you, can, you can get it. Say with me, I can get it. I can be satisfied. So, yes, you can get it. You can get it. But I want you to understand, just because you want it, just because you, you have that intention, doesn't mean that you already drink or you already eat. Just because, you know, you are, you are, you are uh, 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 thirsty, you know, just because you, uh, you plan to, you have a bottle of water here. If I don't drink it, I just have it here. You can prepare, you can prepare a meal, but if you don't eat it, you will still be hungry. You can go to to grocery store and, and, and buy the materials and you can, you can um, buy the nice cooking ware, but if you don't cook and eat, you will not be satisfied. You will not be satisfied. And I know, I believe that there are a lot of people here, a lot of people here, a lot of people watching online that you are thirsty. You are thirsty. You are thirsty of what? You are thirsty to move on with life. Because you know that you're being stuck in a place. You are tired of going in circles. You, you, you want to be free. 
You are thirsty. You want to be free. You want promotion. You want advancement. You want to grow. You want for you want progress. You want you want growth to believe that God is about to enlarge your borders. God wants to enlarge your borders, and when God is, it, it is going to be uh, uh, manifest. Is when is it going to be fulfilled in my in my life? You are thirsty for that. What you need to do is. You need to engage, meaning you need to execute. You need to do it. You need to, you need to unlock the potential for enlarging. You need to accelerate everything that is on the inside of you. Not on the outside, but on the inside of you. Allow the Holy Spirit to manifest because uh, it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. So what we need to do is uh, just like what the Nike slogan said, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> if you are thirsty, just drink. Eat. If you're hungry, just eat. And it is not enough if you want to lose weight and you are motivated because you saw some of your friends and you begin to buy gym clothes. And if you don't go to the gym, you will still look the same. <laughs> you said you want to walk. You want, oh, yes, I want to walk. Okay, and then you look at your friend's shoes. Okay, that looks comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the brand? Where did you buy it? And this and that. And you, you bought that shoes. And just because you bought that shoes, and if you don't walk, you, you have not really engaged. You just have a good intention, and you put your nice shoes in the closet. It won't work. It won't work. It is very simple. We need to engage. You have to execute it. If you are thirsty, come to Jesus and drink. Come to Jesus and drink. And you know, um, uh, Steffi quoted James um, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe, and I want to quote from the book of James. And the book of James says, uh, it is not enough for us to be the, uh, 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 we just, we just uh, the hearer of the word. We just hear the word. We just hear the word. And if you just hear the word, and expect to get the result? No. Uh-uh. Can you say uh-uh? <laughs> if you just become the hearer of the word, you will not experience it. But James mentioned about be the doer of the word, not only the hearer of the word. So when you drink, out of you is going to begin to flow rivers of living water, and the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. He is ready to give it to you. Maybe you don't realize that you are hungry. Maybe you don't realize that you are thirsty spiritually. And I am going to give you examples of four people in the Bible, and I, I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And I know in the meantime, you know, talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is to ship you from the inside out, not from the outside in, from the inside out. It, it is not talking about behavior modification. It is talking about from the inside out. That means, that means you will be changed from the inside out. Uh, the Holy Spirit will speak to you because the rivers will flow in you and the rivers will bring healing in, in your life first. Your life will be changed. Your life will be better. Your, your words will be better. You will not talk uh, uh, using foul language anymore because from within. And you don't, uh, you don't have to strive. In fact, you cannot strive. Because uh, it is not by might, not by power. What we need to do is just say, say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I rely on you. I cannot do it with my own strength. Lord, oh Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And uh, what we need to do is we need to allow the Holy Spirit to, to crucify our flesh. What? Crucify our flesh. Yeah. Fleshly desire. If you are not hungry, if I give you if I uh, 
give you uh, one of your favorite food, you will not eat it. Yes. If you are, if you are full, if you are full, you will not eat. You have no appetite. And hungry is a good sign. Hungry is an indicator. And uh, all right, all right. I hear some of you begin to say or whisper to your friend. I see, I am, I hungry uh, many times. Okay, well, <laughs> it comes to two, two possibilities. Either you have a very uh, high metabolism or you are in the flesh. <laughs> I'm talking about spiritual hunger, and that is only an analogy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Moving forward. Are you with me? Yes. Are you okay? Yes. Am I clear? Can I move on? Yes. Kind of weak. How about this side here? Are you okay? Yes. Can all of us say amen? amen? Can we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you. Can you say with an honest heart, I am hungry, Lord Jesus. I am thirsty, Lord Jesus. I pray that you'll be satisfied today. Yes, 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 today. Okay. All right. God always approves me in private before he promotes me in public. In other words, people cannot see the river in me. You cannot see the river in me. <laughs> they can just see the evidence that the river is there. People cannot see the Holy Spirit in you. But they can see the evidence. When they begin to see that um, the Holy Spirit shape your value system then your, your outlook in life is different. Your attitude towards other people, how you respond to offense. Then people will say, oh, um, he's changed. Then you can forgive people. Then you like to serve. Before you only like to criticize, but now you like to give encouragement. You like to serve, you like to help, you like to, you know, it's just suddenly you change. Why? Because the river flows and the river somehow engraves in your life that it forms something in you that you are no longer the same anymore. Because everywhere the river flows, it engraves it with the life of God and leaves something Beautiful, something spectacular in your life. How many of you have attended the reunion with your high school friends? Okay. Um, how do you like to hear, Oh, you are the same like 40 years ago. <laughs> and then the, the common respond was ha 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 how about if you if you meet your 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 your, your um, friends your high school friends your college friends you know um, 10 years ago you were in college together maybe uh, 50 years ago you were in uh, high school or in uh, elementary school and then when they met you they said wow something something is different in you you are not like you used to. Can you tell me? I want what you have. Jesus. God always approved me in private before he promotes me in public. Every person that ever succeeded in life first succeeded privately, inwardly, and then succeeded publicly. So it's the inward work, okay? And uh, in other words, inside of them, they have a dream, and they already have formulated that dream, and that captured their life, and when they succeeded internally, it will manifest outwardly. So God works in my private time. When I'm alone, somebody said, I forgot who, whose quote was this. 
if you can kneel in private, you can stand in public. We need to be able to learn to kneel in private. So again, um, the exact op- the exact opposite is the same. You know, uh, you can you can take a person uh, who who is always negative, who doesn't believe uh, anything good is can happen, you know, and you give that person uh, a great opportunity, that person will reduce it to failure. Why? Because they don't believe in anything that, that is good or great. God shapes our life from the inside out. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. Okay. I'm going to give you four uh, individuals in the, in the Bible, four names in the Bible that we can learn. We can learn from, from the stories. Remember the Old Testament? The narrative, it tells stories and uh, gives messages to all of us. The first uh, person is David. How many of you remember or you have heard that David fought Goliath? He defeated the giant. How many of you heard the story? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Back then, two nations, okay, two nations, they watch. They watch when David fought the giant, Goliath. The Israel and the Philistine, they they all watched them. They, they, They all were there. But, but, nobody saw him kill a lion. Because it was in private. Nobody saw him kill a bear. Because in private. When God promoted David in private. When God approved David in private. Then he will promote him in public. Oh Jesus. And who is this man? What kind of man is David? In the book of. Psalm chapter 63, it says, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is No water. There is something about a hungry heart that Jesus loves. God loves hungry hearts. Oh God. Think about this. This man, he was in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness. (laughs) He was in the wilderness. He has every right to complain, but he did not. He has every right, every possibility to to uh, just just get mad at God? No, no, no. He said, I, I, I'm thirsty. My soul, my inward being, my inner man, I am thirsty. I don't know how many of you, you, are, you, you feel like you are dry right now and you are in the wilderness experience. You are in the wilderness experience. It's tough for you. You feel like it's tough. It's just like, oh, I, I hope you can learn from that girl just now. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break, break every chain. God is going to do mighty things in you even when you are in the midst of the wilderness experience right now. You know it better. I don't know what you are going through. You know it yourself. But David made that decision. David cried to the Lord. The second one is Simon Peter. In the book of John, chapter 6, 68, it says, But Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? We have, you have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. Now think about this. The second man is Simon Peter. He followed Jesus along with other friends, along with the other disciples. And the Bible mentioned, if you read that context, there were 
many other disciples, they followed Jesus. And at one point, Jesus said, if you don't eat my body and if you don't drink my blood, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. And, and those people, can you say those people? Many people, the multitude, they, they said, oh, this is a hard saying. This is a hard saying. What you say is too hard. And the Bible mentioned that many of them left Jesus until Jesus was alone with the core team of the disciples. If you read the context, the other people, the multitudes, the many people that left, they were also disciples. But they left, how about you? How about you? If you follow Jesus, you already make a commitment. You are a Christian, you follow Jesus. But at, at one time, you know, you, your friends know about you and they begin to leave you. They begin to abandon you because you are too fanatic. You are too, too much prayer, too much whatever, whatever, you know. And then uh, what would you do? Jesus is he, he, he is so secure. He look at the disciples and say, and do you want to go too? Ooh. Wow. And you know what? The rest of the disciples that remain, no one answered except Simon Peter. And his answer was, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. If you are really hungry and thirsty for the Lord, can you say that? Can you have that firm, firm, solid foundation in your life? Oh, Lord, to whom shall I go? You, you have the words of eternal life. Can you say you? you. Again, you. you. The key here is God. The, the key here is, is Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Oh, the third person that I want to share to you. And again, uh, I want you to learn from this story. The narrative is very, very uh, powerful to digest. The third person is we learn from Moses. Moses. And uh, before I show you the, the verse, Moses, you know, he got an assignment from the Lord, and uh, he obeyed the Lord. It was a tough assignment. In fact, it was a very tough assignment to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses experienced, because as he obeyed the Lord, you know, he, he, he saw, he witnessed, he performed signs and wonders and miracles. And then God used Moses to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. On the way, you know, talking about the success, talking about signs and wonders and miracles, it's just mind-blowing. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. In the midst of his successes, this is, this is what he said. Oh, God. First, the Lord himself said in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, God himself said, my presence, can you say my presence? My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. After God said that, Moses said, then he said to him, to God, if your presence, if your presence doesn't go with us, do not lead us up from here. You need to hear the cry of Moses. Oh, you need to hear the heart of Moses. His desire is for the presence of God. His desire is for the presence of God even after all the successes in his ministries. Lord, your presence, it is your presence. And so many of us, so many Christians uh, treat God like uh, an add-on. Oh, just add on, okay, just, just add on God, okay. Uh, you, 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 you make plan and then you ask God to approve your plan. No, 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 not Moses. In the midst of his successes, 
His desire is the presence of God. And, and he, Moses did not make God as a secondary, not as, as an, as an uh, add-on. No, no. It is, it is the, the primary heart issue for Moses. It's like he was saying, I don't care with how many resources I have. I don't care how many miracles and signs and wonders I've, I've seen. I, 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 don't, I don't care, but I, I want your presence, Lord. I want your presence. How about us right now? Maybe you have some successes and uh, powerful things that you can share, testify, and praise God. Praise God for that. But are you, are you looking for a miracle? Or are you looking, focusing, searching for the miracle worker? Are you looking for blessing or are you looking for the blesser? Are you looking for healing or are you looking for the uh, healer? Jesus. And the cry that Moses did unto God, it was like a, a cocky man. It was not, not like a, a rich man demanding your presence, your presence. No, 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 no. This is like, if I can describe it, it's like the cry of a baby who is hungry for the milk from the mother. I need you. It's not a demand. No. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. And it is interesting that Jesus, Jesus affirmed all what I share to you from this man of God when in the book of John chapter 15, verse 15b, I want you to watch this. Jesus was talking about the, uh, I, am the uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the vine, you are the bran branches. And then Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Notice that Jesus did not say, without me, you can't do anything. Let me repeat one more time, just in case you don't get it. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He did not say, without me, you can do anything. Without me, you can, you can do, you can do, you can do many things. Many people can do many things without God. You can work without God. You can serve the Lord without God. You can preach without God. You can serve without God. You can plan without God. You can do many things without God. You can do nothing. Can we read it that way? Without me, you can do nothing. You can make plans, you can make money, you can be so successful, but at the end it amounts to nothing. Yes. I heard some preachers even said, you can start church without God. Because they depend on their own skill, talent, eloquence, not the presence of the Holy Spirit, not in prayer, not in humbling ourselves. You can do nothing. Oh, it's like <laughs> at the end of the day, that amounts to nothing more than Sand castles on the beach. How many of you have watched that uh, sand castles competition? Many of them are beautiful. So beautiful. It's not easy to build beautiful sand castle. It takes time. It takes skill. It takes effort. But at the end of the day, it's nothing. Without me, you can do Yes, you can do. You can do many things without God, but at the end of the day, it amounts to nothing. The Holy Spirit is going to 
fill you up. Those of you who are really hungry and thirsty, in a few minutes I'm going to conclude and I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to be honest to yourself. I want you to be honest to yourself. I don't want to respond to the altar call or the question that I'm going to ask you just because you want to look good. No, 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 no. Uh, you don't need to look good on me because God is uh, important here. And uh, I, if, 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 you, if you want to be satisfied, you will be satisfied. Because the Holy Spirit is saying to all of us right now, the Holy Spirit is saying to us that uh, I will never send anyone empty unless they come full of themselves. Remember I told you that if you are hungry, <laughs> you have no appetite. Uh, if, you are, if you are full. If you are full, you already ate too much. You have no appetite. If you are already full of yourself, you are already full of preconceived expectations. You already have full of ideas. You put God in the box. And you try to define God. And uh, you put God in a box with a lot of rules and regulations. But God is looking for people whose hearts are so hungry and thirsty. If you really say, Lord, what I want is you. Above everything, I want you. Lord, if your presence is not there... Nothing else matter anyway. Every time I preach, I never take it for granted. I've preached for more than 30 years. Not long compared to many other preachers. But I never take it for granted. I, I prayed, I pray, oh God, <laughs> oh God, yes, I need your grace. Jesus, Jesus. Now the last man that I want to share to you is amazing. This man is Jacob. Jacob. The story of Jacob. Jacob had a uh, twin brother. His name is Esau. And um, Jacob, he, he cheated his, his brother. He tricked his father. And uh, Jacob, the meaning of the name is supplanter, um, trickster, cheater. That's the meaning of the name of Jacob. And uh, Jacob was not the character that we would think of as a uh, nice guy. No, not, not, not Jacob. Um, he was a deceiver. He was a crook. But God, can you say, but God. But God saw something in Jacob that he loved. What? Do you realize that many times we see people different than the way God sees people? The Bible mentioned in the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 2, it says, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. What? Why did you say that, God? I'll tell you why. I want you to, to, to watch this. It really amazes me what God looks for, what God looks for in people. It is very different than what we look for. In the book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 26, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Maybe the way you read this verse is more towards that blessing, but you can see on the screen that 
what I emphasize is not the blessing, but the you, which is God. Jacob met God. He wrestled with God. And then you can see from this verse that it is not talking about blessing, about material blessing, about riches, about wealth. I'm not opposed to that, but it seems like very clear that even though Jacob was was wealthy, he was rich, talking about blessing, he got a blessing, he stole the blessing from his twin brother Esau. He got a blessing from his father Isaac. He was blessed, he was rich, because when he stayed with Laban, he, he, he was... He, he owned a lot of cattle. He was rich. He was wealthy. So you need to understand. I want you to get this when Jacob talk about, I will not let you go until you bless me. He's not talking about material blessing. I, he had all those things. Apparently, he was a uh, deceiver. He... He deceived people. He, he lied to people because he wanted to satisfy something within him. If I got that, the firstborn right, then I'll be happy. He did it. He got it. But I was still empty. If I am wealthy, then I'll be satisfied. He got it. But there is still, he was still not satisfied. He got everything. But he said, after all, in his old age, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you you bless me are you hungry for God are you thirsty for God music team come forward let's all stand up I want to ask you the simple question and I want you to respond. But I don't want you to respond quickly because this requires obedience to the Holy Spirit. I don't take it lightly because when Peter came to me just during worship, he's going to pour out his spirit right now. He's ready. He is ready. The Holy Spirit is ready. Marcus experienced it at home when he was alone. Yes, yes, he's ready. Are you ready? Are you hungry and thirsty for God? Are you, are you serious? Are you hungry and thirsty for God? I'm going to ask you this question, this simple question, simple question. And I, I, I don't want you to respond quickly. I don't, want to, I don't want you to raise your hand quickly. I want you to pray. The question is clear. I will count to three. Not now, but again, even you are watching online, I want you to, to really pray for this. I want you to really pray for this. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty for God? Or because of other things, you become lukewarm. You are not hungry anymore. You are not thirsty anymore because you are... You think that all other things can satisfy you. Without me, you can do nothing. Think about all the other things that, all, all the, those things that you do without God. It will amount to nothing. It will amount to nothing. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. So, again, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty for God? 
at the count of three, if you are really serious, God, God, I want you to, to look at this people that will respond to you, not to me, but to you, God. I pray that you will work in them. You'll work in me too, oh God, because it's not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. At the count of three, if you say yes, I want you to lift up both of your hands unto the Lord. One, two, three. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh God, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Every one of you, come on, pray. Give thanks to the Lord. Lord, He is going to fill you. It is Jesus that will fill you with the Holy Spirit. No matter how long you have been in the ministry, no matter how long you have been a Christian, no matter how successful you have been in the ministry, Oh, we learn from this man of God. Lord, what we want is you. What we want is you after all, oh God. Lord, we, we don't want to do something that, that amounts to nothing. Every one of you right now. Every one of you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. And Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Oh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you fill them. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Right now, all of you, come. Jesus said, those who are thirsty, come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Well, after the surface, after service, you will, you will go, you will go home, you'll pass this door, and are you allowing the river of the Holy Spirit to flow in you and overflow in you? As we are here right now, the presence of God is here. I want you to drink as much as possible, but... but there is a, a tendency that when you go home, listen, listen. When you go home, or not even home, as soon as you leave the, the auditorium, you, you, may, you may forget what, what just happened. Listen. What I learned, what I learned how I can grow in the Lord, Back in the 80s, some of you are here, the old timers. You know what happened? After church, we always hang out together. We hang out together. And in our spending time together, we talk about what was preached. We didn't just let it go by and as if nothing happened we talk about cars we talk about hobbies we talk about clothes we talk about shopping no 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 at that time, i'm not opposed to uh, those conversations no i'm just telling you back then we can really experience the power of the holy spirit because when we went to our apartments when we went back home when we went out to dennis to eat at the restaurant, you know, wherever we go, we talk about that. We pray it. We worship God at home in the apartment. That kept the fire going. So I want you to know, 
before I dismiss you, I want you to get this. It is the Holy Spirit that we need. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Let's sing this song. You ready for this song? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, let's worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Bless your people, oh God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Let your presence be with us wherever we are. Not only in this building, but in the car, at home, at work, in campus. You have a great plan. You have great plans for us. You guide us, Holy Spirit. You guide us. God bless you all. Love you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.